So now let's talk about VPN connection modes. So there are two modes of, uh, of, uh, of VPN. One is a tunnel mode and one is a transport mode. Now, the, these two modes, these two, the, uh, these two terms, tunnel mode and transport mode, they are generally seen in the IPsec terminology, but IPsec is not the only way to configure a VPN or to bring up a VPN, right? There are various types of VPNs like PPP, PPTP, uh, L2TP, SSL, but these two terms that I'm talking about here, tunnel mode and transport mode, they are generally seen in the IPsec terminology only. However, it does not mean that these two modes, tunnel mode and transport mode are only used with IPsec. Other types of VPN also may be using same modes, but they may or they may not be using the same terms. They may they may be using these same modes, tunnel mode and transport mode, but they may be using the same terms or maybe they are, they are using some other modes, all right? So still it is value, very, very important to understand these two modes, but don't think that these are just restricted to IPsec. Other types of VPN also use these modes, but they may or they may not be using the same terms, tunnel mode and transport mode, okay? So let's take a look and see what exactly is tunnel mode and transport mode, okay? So let me erase all of this, okay? So tunnel versus transport mode. So let's first talk about tunnel mode. Now, what happens in tunnel mode is, let's say we have two sites here. We have this router, and then we have this router, and they're both connected over the internet, okay? And then behind these routers, we have, they have their own LAN. Now, let's say this is, uh, this is, a system here, S1, S2, S3, and this is another system here, S4, S5, S6, okay? Now, let's say that this system here, S, let's say this is a branch office, and this is a head office. Now, these systems or these users behind the branch office, they need to connect with these systems on behind this head office, all right? Now, what happens is, this system four, let's say, it needs to send some traffic securely over to this system here, S1. S4 needs to communicate securely with S1. So with tunnel mode, the kind of VPN that is established, the mode that is used in the mode, the tunnel mode, what happens in tunnel mode is that S4 will initiate some traffic and that traffic will be sent over to this router here, this branch office router. Let's call this R2 and this is R1. Router one, router two. So S4 will send, will initiate some traffic towards S1 and it will forward that traffic out to the router because that is how it needs to be sent out, right? So this router will receive the traffic and this router will then initiate the tunnel. This router will then create the tunnel over with this router and it will then forward the traffic over to this router R1 and then R1 will receive that encrypted traffic. It will then decrypt it and then send it over to S1. So in this case, what is happening is that the actual communicating parties, who are those actual communicating parties? These parties, right? S4 and S1. But these two actual communicating parties are not the ones that are establishing the connection, that are establishing the VPN connection, right? The VPN is actually creating, is actually getting created between these two routers, R2 and R1. Okay, so this is what happens in tunnel mode. So in tunnel mode, what is happening is that the real source and the real destination, which is this case, which is here, real source and the real destination, they are they do not create the VPN themselves. Rather, the duty, the job of creating the VPNs is offloaded to some other central device on behalf of the real source and the real destination. And that is what is meant by tunnel mode. So similarly, in this case, if let's say S5 also needs to communicate with S1 here, then S5 does not have to, you do not have to configure the VPN separately on S5, right? Because you have configured the VPN in tunnel mode on these two routers. So the job of 
creating the VPN tunnel has been offloaded to some other central devices, which are R1 and R2 in this case. So if S5 ne also needs to communicate with S1 here, then S5 will send the traffic in clear text to R2, and then R2 will receive the traffic and it will match the VPN configuration. And then R2 will encrypt the traffic and send it over the VPN tunnel to R1. R1 will receive the encrypted traffic. It will decrypt it and send the, de the decrypted traffic back to S1, all right? So that is tunnel mode, okay? Where the task of creating the VPN tunnel is offloaded to some central device rather than configuring VPN on the real source and the real destination, all right? Now, coming to transport mode. So what is transport mode? So let's say we have uh, we have a server here, which is our syslog server. Okay. Now let's say this system S6, this is a web server. Okay. Now this web server generates some logs and you want these logs to be sent to this syslog server, which is in the same network. So you want that the logs that are being generated on this web server, they should be sent securely to this syslog server. So in this case, when you create a VPN tunnel, because you want the logs to be sent securely because they could be containing sensitive information like usernames, passwords, and other sensitive information. So you want the logs to be sent securely from S6 to the syslog server. In this case, if you configure a VPN tunnel, that will be configured in transport mode. Why? Because in this case, you are configuring VPN between the real source and the real destination, right? We are not offloading the task of creating the VPN tunnel to some other device, which is in between them, which is in between the real source and the real destination. In this case, the real source is the one that is actually actually initiating the VPN connection. And you, so you will be doing the configuration here and here. So when the VPN connection is made between the real source and the real destination, that is called transport mode. And when the VPN tunnel is not made between the real source and the real destination, and if it is offloaded to some other central device, then that is called a tunnel mode. All right. Now, although you don't have to go that much deep for CISSP, but just a quick uh, I just want to give you some details here so that it is easier for you to remember these two things for the exam purpose, okay? So how exactly will the traffic and uh, encapsulation look like in both these modes? So let's take a look here. So let's say we have this S4 here, okay, which is trying to communicate with S1. System 4 is trying to communicate with System 1. So S4 will create some traffic, right? So it will look like this. So this is data. And then this will be uh, the 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 source IP and then there will be a destination IP, right? Source IP will be let's say this is let's say this is uh this is S4, okay? So let me enter S4 here and the destination IP will be S1, right? So it will create this packet and it will send it out towards this router. So this packet will be received by this router which has this this data source IP as S4, destination IP as S1. And it is all unencrypted. It is in plain text because VPN has not been created yet. So this router will receive this traffic, will this will receive this packet, and it will determine that it needs to be sent out over this tunnel. So what it will do is it will add its own VPN header and VPN trailer, right? And then it will add a new IP, a new source IP, and a new destination ip so what will be the new source ip let's say this ip address is 30.1.1.1 a public ip address and this ip address is 2111 so r1's public ip address is 2111 and r2's public ip address is 3111 so the new source ip that r2 will add will be 30.1.1.1 and the new destination ip that it will add will be 20.1.1.1 because that is the destination ip for this tunnel right and then this traffic, this whole packet will be, this whole part will be encrypted. Okay. So this is what happens in tunnel mode where the entire packet is, and where the entire original packet is encapsulated into another packet by the VPN gateways. All right. 
Now, if this were to happen in transport mode, how will transport mode handle the traffic? So let's take a look at this example again, where this web server is trying to send some logs to this syslog server. So, so this web server will generate some traffic, which is data, let's say, which will be syslogs actually. And then it will add a VPN header straight away. Why? Because in this case, this device is the one which is creating the VPN connection and not some other device. So it will add a VPN header and a VPN trailer, right? And then it will add its own IP address, which will be S6, right? The source IP. And then it will add a destination IP address as well, which is S7 syslog server. So it will add S7, the destination IP address. And then this will be, it will, uh, if required, if it is configured for encryption, it will encrypt it as well. And then it will be sent out to this syslog server. All right. So this is how the, the, the encapsulation differs in case of tunnel mode and in case of transport mode. Okay. Now, two more things to keep in mind when it comes to tunnel mode and transport mode is that in tunnel mode, these IP addresses, S2, S5, S6, S7, whatever, and these IP addresses, they can remain private, correct? Because this S, S4 could be, let's say, 192, 168, 1.1. And this S1 here could be 10.1.1.1. And they will still be able to communicate without changing their IP addresses because when their traffic reaches this router, this router will encapsulate, will add new headers, and this router will add its own public IP address, 3111, and it will add a new public destination IP address as well, which is 2111. And when it gets here, this router will strip off these headers and trailers, and what will remain is this. So that means over the tunnel mode, these systems, the communicating systems can have private IP addresses. They don't necessarily need to have public IP addresses, but when we are talking of transport mode than the real source and the real destination, if they are going over the internet, then we have to take care of the IP addresses as well, because in this case, nobody else is going to be encapsulating their packets, right? Into some new or, or adding some new headers and trailers. So we need to make sure that they are able to communicate if they are able to, if they are communicating over the internet. So we need to make sure that there is a natting device in between, which can nat the private IP address to some public IP address. Okay. So that's, uh, that those are the differences between tunnel mode and transport mode. Let's go back to the mind map now. So tunnel mode, what does it say here? It says in tunnel mode, VPN protection is not provided at the actual source and destination level. Rather, there are intermediate devices, which are called VPN gateways in between, which handle the job of protecting the traffic between the real source and real destination, which I, which is what, what I just explained to you. And then, for example, if, if you have multiple computers in one location and multiple computers in another remote location, and the two locations need to build a VPN over the internet to secure the communications, then instead of each computer on each side building a separate VPN connection, the task can be offloaded to an intermediate device like a router, or it could be a firewall as well on each location. So what is the benefit of using tunnel mode? It provides scalability because the VPN tunnel building task can be given to a central device and you, you do not have to configure VPN separately on each real source and each real destination, okay? And the real source and destination IP addresses can be private IP addresses as they're encapsulated in another packet by the VPN gateway, okay? Now coming to transport mode. Uh, so in transport mode, VPN protection is provided at the real source and destination level, which is what I explained just a minute ago. In other words, the VPN tunnel is made between the real source and real destination, not between some intermediate VPN gateways, like it was the case with tunnel mode. And it is also known as host-to-host -host VPN or end-to-end -end encrypted VPN. Okay, so just remember that. Uh, it is also known as host-to-host -host VPN or end-to-end -end encrypted VPN because if you see here, in this case, we do not have end-to-end uh, -end encrypted VPN in case of this tunnel mode because traffic from this host to this router, it is not encrypted, right? Similarly, traffic from this host to this host is not encrypted. The encryption is only happening between this router and this router. Other than that, the traffic is, is, uh, is unencrypted. But in case of transport mode, the traffic is encrypted 
from the real source to the real destination. So that is why it is called end-to-end -end encrypted VPN. Okay.